Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at my JSOX transparent backplate. This isn't just any, as I got the green edition. So far, I think I'm the only one on YouTube to have one of the colored editions. I chose this color green because I really wanted it to match my Steam Deck. I just put on the Kill Switch skins, and I really think this is going to look awesome. The box is pretty simple, showing all the colors of the JSOX backplate available, as well as the website on the front flap. Two simple, clear pieces of tape keep it sealed. Once we get it opened up, we get a view of our, our buttons in this white box here. Ooh, and look at that backplate. Looks a little weird with this white plastic on it. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so this isn't really green. Uh, this is, looks more like a teal to me. But, I really like the color. Right there is the thermal pad. And there's the aluminum plate. I really like how they went with black for this one. Uh, they give us a user manual. <laughs> like, I'm going to use that. So in this white box here, it says ESD protected. I've never really had any ESD issues with any of the electronics I've opened up, but I always make sure to ground myself before I open up anything. Here are all the different versions of the JSOX backplates buttons. We have the regular Steam Deck buttons all the way up to some really long travel ones. And in the bottom of this box here are some of the tools needed for installation. They give you a pretty simple screwdriver here. A spudger tool to try to get the back plate off. I don't really like these and I don't use them much. Uh, they give you these little finger gloves so you don't shock anything on the inside of your steam deck. And they give you a plethora of extra screws in case you strip any. I think these are really going to come in handy. Now that we've got everything unboxed, let's take a look at these buttons. I chose to try out some of the longest travel buttons. Pretty easy to install. Just slide the button under the hook on the back plate and place them down. The holes should line up pretty well with the brass inserts on the back plate. These brass inserts are what we would be holding down these buttons later. We'll take some of the black screws they provided us inside the bag and tighten down these back buttons. All of the bags of screws are labeled so there's no confusion which screw is going where. screwdriver they gave us has a really bad magnet and I'm struggling to get some of these screws in there. In fact I dropped a couple trying to get these buttons in. Now that we've got those buttons in I just wanted to take a quick look at my case. Unfortunately with this backplate and these buttons 
There's no way to use the kill switch with this backplate. It just won't fit. This is really what I expected when I ordered this backplate. I expected something akin to Nintendo 64 Jungle Green. Unfortunately, I got a different color. It looks a lot more like a teal in my opinion, and really isn't going to match my skin well, but I think it'll still look pretty sick. Now that we're done looking at all of that, let's start getting this Steam Deck disassembled. I'm going to use the case that came with my Steam Deck to hold it while I unscrew the stock backplate. There are eight screws that need to be undone. After that, all that's holding the backplate on is some plastic clips, which you can pry off. Now that we have the backplate off, this is my Steam Deck. It's heavily modified at this point. As you can see, I have the Ghoulie Kit thumbsticks. You'll see a lot more modifications once we get this aluminum heat shield off. It'll be three screws. To get this last screw off, what we're going to want to do is pry up the silver tape with the razor and peel it off a little bit. Now that we have the aluminum tape out of the way, we can just unscrew this and the back plate should come right off. Now that all the screws are out, the heatsink should come right off. As you can see, I've cut a channel into the black tape here. This is so the thermal pads on my heat pipe make good contact with the heat shield. Down here I have a 2TB SSD that I've upgraded my Steam Deck to. It originally came with 64 gigs, but I couldn't handle just having I couldn't handle having that low a storage. Now that I've showed you all the mods that I've done to my Steam Deck, we'll screw all these screws in and then clean up the heat shield so that when we put the back plate on, there's nothing in between the heat shield and the thermal pad. I use IPA on a Q-tip. Now that everything's ready, let's peel off the protective layer on this thermal pad. Satisfying. Very satisfying. And it'll just go right over here when we place it down. Now we just apply a little pressure and make sure all the clips snap in. I uh, had a little issue. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Now that was satisfying. Uh, there does seem to be a little bit of a gap here, but this goes away after we tighten down all the screws. get these things off. Never use those again. 
Now that I've shown you everything that I've done to my Steam Deck, I'd like to thank DIY Poppy on inspiring me on how to do the Thermal Pad mod. Check out his channel to see a more in-depth guide of how the Thermal Pad mod works. I'm going to take it even one more step further though. I'm going to use a phone Peltier cooler. A lot of times with these smaller Peltier coolers, they have issues getting overrun, especially with higher heat loads. But I really like this one, and it seems like it's going to fit perfectly on this JSOX backplate. Using a dock, I'm going to plug a USB cable into the dock and then power the Peltier cooler with it. Uses USB Type C and is super simple to use. As soon as you plug it in, the fan spins to life. Man, that really is a perfect fit. I'm super excited to see how that affects temps. The Peltier cooler I'm using comes with this mounting plate. Which is also a perfect fit for the back plate on my Steam Deck. I'm going to clean it off with some IPA. Make sure that's dry before you apply the mounting sticker. You peel off the film and then line it up carefully with the back plate. If you're in a rush or don't line it up carefully enough, you will not be able to get it back off without destroying it. So make sure you have yours right on that aluminum plate and rub it down so it's adhered correctly. Now the Peltier cooler just snaps right on and won't come off. I shook this pretty hard and it still didn't come off. I was very impressed. This will probably be my docking situation from now on, as it's super easy to just leave it plugged into your dock, and whenever you need to, just snap on the Peltier cooler. However, portably, I probably won't be using this very much, as you have to stay plugged in for the Peltier cooler to work. And now that we're finally loading into a game, Let's see how this affects fan speed, as well as our CPU and GPU temperatures. And so far, I'm already impressed by how low the fan speed is. I'm going to give it some time to heat up, and I'll get right back to you guys.
from playing so far, I've noticed that temperatures get the highest when I roam through towns like this one. So far, I haven't seen the Steam Deck hit anywhere above the mid-70s, and that's truly impressive. The Witcher 3 is a very demanding game, and to see temperatures like this is awesome. For this next little runaround, I'll be using the Fantastic Decky plugin to max out my fan RPM at 7000. Let's see the absolute lowest we can drop the Steam Deck temperatures to. Wow, mid-60s just roaming around the trails here? With everything I've done to this Steam Deck, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out DIY Poppy's channel. With everything that he's given to the Steam Deck community, it'd be a shame not to watch some of his awesome content. Personally, one of my favorites and what inspired me to make this video is his modded JSOX backplate video. Stay out of my way. I'll have that video up on screen for you to click on. And while you're at it, why not check out some more of my videos? I have all kinds of Steam Deck content. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to see more.